And we are here with Trey the Explainer once again. Now, Trey, you wanted to... If that's your real name. <laughs> uh... if... Now, Trey, Trey wanted to talk to Preston about something regarding Lomas Longstrider. You hit me up privately. You're like, hey, I want to do this uh, type of podcast where... What was it? You tried to convince Preston that Lomas was a real person? I So I was curious, like... Um... What was I doing? I was reading the the World of Ice and Fire book, or at least the the audio book of it, and uh, yeah. he they bring up Lomas Longstrider a lot, and I guess they bring him up in dance, um, Tyrion, I guess. And I was just yeah. curious. It was like a, just for like a thought experiment because I like history stuff, and um, people have done this with like so Lomas Longstrider is like obviously George has like this weird. He's really into Herodotus, who's this this ancient Greek historian. Uh, who wrote like the first it was called like the histories and it was the first like sort of like formal history book where it was a guy who he he was a Herodotus his name was Herodotus he explored a good chunk of like the the Mediterranean and and wrote a book of all his adventures and <clears throat> and recordings of history and stuff uh and George has, has been deeply impacted by Herodotus like uh like I like I've been so I start out like reading Herodotus like a year ago and it's just like so dense and stuff. But when you read it, you're like, oh, George like like stole this. Like George, George he must have like read it as a kid or or something or, or has gone back to yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Um, because there's stuff in like I think he's used it to fill out the the A Song of Ice and Fire world. Um, like there's little details like. Uh, you'll hear it from here first. I don't think anybody else has noticed this, but like the Golden Company, like uh, them gilding like the skulls and putting them on oh, really? on a thing, that is straight up from Herodotus. Like he Herodotus what? mentions a, a tribe of Scythians called the Isidonians, um, and it says like they they uh, they they let's see, what does it say? Um, they would dip the they would gild the skulls of their elders in gold and then put place them in a place of honor. Which which is which sounds like the Golden Company, with their, yeah, their former yeah, leaders, and so and so like that's just like one thing. And when I when you put it together, I'm like, oh, like the, he's like borrowed a lot from Herodotus. Like the one that sticks out to me is um, in Marine, like the with the with the Red Graces. Um, they're they're based on like they have a sort of ritual prostitution kind of thing, where yes, they like I think it's in a Quentin chapter or something where they say that like. Everybody, every young girl in Marine or priestess in Marine is not allowed to leave a garden until they have sex with, like, one guy or something. And that's just straight up rip from Herodotus. Like, Herodotus' description of the city of Babylon. Like, he says that's a, a custom that the ladies do there. Uh, and then the rat cook. The rat cook, I found out, is is stolen from Herodotus. Or borrowed. Really? Was, not stolen. Borrowed. Yeah, I think it yeah. is based on um, Cyrus the Great's origin story. Where his dad, King Astyages, like had had a guy named Harpagus. Like um, th- these are Persians. Like he he like dump. Like he was. It's kind of like Jesus, where he was worried that his son was going to usurp him or whatever. Or like the baby was born. I guess it's more like Oedipus. Like the baby was born, and he was worried that the baby was going to kill him one day or something. There was a prophecy, and King Astyages like cast out his son Cyrus into the wilderness and told Harpagus to like kill the baby. And as it turns out, Harpagus like felt pity and gave the baby to like a poor couple or something. And then Cyrus the Great comes back, it, like he he's like rediscovered. And King Astyages, as punishment for that guy who didn't kill his baby, um, he fed him his own son at a banquet without him knowing. Oh, and, now th- th- that's also the, the Greek mythology story of what um, um, where the guy eats his own son. Um, uh, oh man, but uh, I mean, obviously, like Cronus eats his own children, but um, uh, I want to say per per Persepol- per Persepolis. I'm, I'm um, I'm gonna pull it out. I'm very very um. Besides Cronus, there, oh, what he like eats the shoulder of his own son. Oh, um, um, I'm I'm, I'm trying to find it, but the um. Yeah, Tantalus and, and Pelops. Oh. T- Tantalus and Pelops. Um, I think the con- so there's certain there's certain things, and I, I I'm going to talk like I think there there's certain concepts that are so repulsive to human beings that they appear in all sorts of stories and are remembered. I think because they're so repulsive and uh, taboo, and it's like cross cultural. 
Well, I think it's like it's either cross cultural or the, or the story is so old that you know every culture eventually hears about it. You know, so like um, son mother sex, for example, mm. is taboo in nearly every culture on Earth. In fact, mother son sex you don't even see it among apes except for like bonobos who have sex with all the time with everything. Yeah. But like even apes don't have mother son sex. Um, father daughter sex that happens. Mother son sex taboo almost on a weird biological level. Huh. And so it's, it's not, not um, coincidence that Oedipus is one of the most famous and stories of all time. A story about a son having sex with his mother uh, because it's so repulsive to people and that the insult in in so many cultures is motherfucker like motherfucker is oh, like the yeah, worst right. insult right yeah um and so there's certain things now it's the same with like eating one's own child is such a repulsive concept mm. that it just keeps coming back over and over again that there can be nothing more horrific than than eating one's own one child and thus the oldest stories seem to involve that like like Cronus Cronus like eating Zeus and and Tantalus eating Pelops and um, and, and things like that yeah um, um or I guess Tantalus Tantalus maybe fed his own child to the gods or something but yeah it's 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 gross stuff, right? Yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah, so I, I guess it could be like multiple origins of it. I I just assume because it's it's I think it's pretty clear that like George read Herodotus. I was like, oh, and this story about a king feeding like a, a guy his own son, and then at, and during a banquet, and at the end revealing it, like he he has a basket, yeah, and reveals like the head, and it's and it's like this big shock, yeah, yeah, and, and obviously that idea gets stolen by Shakespeare. Um, and put into Titus Andronicus, which is probably the, mo- the if if we're thinking like pop culture, if Shakespeare counts as pop culture, probably the most famous story of people fe- eating their own child <laughs> that comes from Titus Andronicus. Where, man, that's a brutal story. Yeah. Do, do you know Do you know that one, uh, uh, Carmine? Have you heard? Uh, do you know the story of Titus Andronicus? I think I may have read it briefly in high school because I read Oedipus and Antigone in high school. Is that the one about the Roman general? T- in Titus Andronicus, this is the Shakespeare story. And keep in mind, this was Shakespeare's most successful play. Like his most remembered play. Is Even our... more so than Romeo and Juliet or? Yeah, or Hamlet. Yeah. His, obviously his uh, most people remembered loved it. play people, is Hamlet. Like the, the peasants. At the time, people <laughs> loved it. Yeah. <laughs> it was his most successful play was Titus Andronicus. The story is, is, is essentially this guy Titus Andronicus is like a, is like a general. And they, they, they decide, somebody decides to play a prank on him. Or, or, and it's a, like a bad prank. You know, this is, it's a story of, of vengeance. So they, they, uh, he has a bunch of sons die in war and he's down to like one son and like a daughter. And so they decide somebody decides to like rape his daughter, cut out, cut off her hands and cut out her tongue. And um, it's, it's it's quite the and prank. Then they tell, <laughs> right. And then they tell Titus Andronicus, we have your other son hostage when they don't. Please cut off your hand and send it to us. Oh, man. So Titus Andronicus like cuts off his hand and sends it to these people. And it's, it's pretty brutal. Like, it's pretty brutal. Like, um, so th- the whole play, like his, his daughter is walking around without hands or a tongue having been raped. And, um, he has no hand for most of the, for most of the play. And then, so he, he eventually finds out who did it. Um, and it seems to relate to the, the emperor and the empress. So he kills the emperor and empress's children, makes their, makes like grinds down their bones, makes their bones into crust and makes the pie in, in, into the meat. And then he like feeds the pie to the emperor and empress reveals that they're eating their own child oh. and then kills, then kills the emperor and empress. And then there, there's this in, there's this go between guy who is, who was um, who was involved in the whole scheme and they bury him up to his neck in the dirt and allow him to die of thirst. So obviously, this pie, the pie idea is, comes back is more to George. Fray, yeah, fray, yeah, yeah, fray pies and everything. And so, like, um, yeah. All right. I mean, I, it, I it believe that. that George. Yeah, it may be that. I mean, George definitely read Titus Andronicus. I mean, we may have read Herodotus. That would be, or um, I'm 
that would be. I'm convinced that he read Herodotus because the world. Maybe it depends on how much input he did in the world book. I guess. Oh um, yeah, because like the world book has a lot of of I feel like references to Herodotus because like the pyramid of Gis being like 800 feet tall, like ridiculously mm. tall. I think is it might be a reference to Herodotus's misunderstanding of the Great Pyramid of Giza, where he assumed it was 800 feet tall. Where it's actually like oh right, it's like half that. Okay. Um. So how how tall how tall is the real pyramids? It's like uh, it's shorter than it probably was in antiquity. It's like it, uh, some th- people think it was like five hundred in antiquity with all the blocks yeah. on it and stuff. Um. So like Herodotus like over overestimate like that's his like thing is that he just overestimates a lot of stuff. Um. Skull cups like people drinking out of skull cups is is in uh, Herodotus as well. Um, but I guess it's like a really kind of broad thing, so maybe not. Um, I don't know. Yeah, I know Tibetan Tibetans would would drink out of the skulls of their ancestors in ceremonies. Mm. You'd save your your ancestors' skulls and like the tops of their skulls and like make them into ornate bones, um, and, and like have like scepters of of like your ancestors' bones. That was like pretty pretty. You know? Yeah, I'd I'd um, want to ask him if if I could ask George a question, I'd want to see if he he knows Herodotus. Maybe it's like it would be a total misfire, and he'd be like, "No, never heard of it," <laughs> and it just like loses it. Well, it's also possible <laughs> that Elio and Linda were the ones who have read it. Because correct me if I'm wrong, Preston, wasn't Elio and Linda the ones who helped George write the World of Ice and Fire book? Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, you can. Um, Preston has this weird like email relationship with Elio, where you just ask <laughs> Elio questions I'd be and he'll interested. just answer them. So just ask Elio. Oh well, I'd say that like. When I read The World of Ice and Fire and, and, and looking at how it was put together, I, you kind of, you, so it, it's, it's, it's in three sections, essentially. You've got the Targaryen section, which I, I feel is based on the rogue prince, Princess and the Queen, mm. and like his other Targaryen notes. So it's like mostly George, like the, whatever Targaryen notes he had. And then, the, the, then there's the Westeros part, which is clearly just based on, on, a Song of Ice and Fire, the series. Almost nearly every single piece is just something that appeared in the book. Mm-hmm. And then there's the international part, the Esos part, which is kind of like, you know, new. Yeah. And I always felt like, oh, that was like George, that was like Elio and Linda's like contribution because there's not much on, on Karth and there's not much on Gis, but there's stuff on like random locations that we're never going to visit. Oh, like man. Lauren, like Lauren. Maybe... Maybe Elio and Linda are the ones that are Herodotus fans. I don't know. Yeah, maybe. But then yeah. when I asked Elio, and I point, you know, I asked Elio like, how much like is this in, is this from you? Is this from you? Like he said straight up, like, no, that's all George. But he did. But in a different interview, he did say that in that section they got a little bit more leeway, and they were surprised. Oh. For example, he said he wrote something about like lice or bravos and he was surprised that like it, it like stayed in oh. because um so if if there is something that might be elio it would be it would be the 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 world like around the world part mm. um like the esos part which also has like a lot of references to um lovecraft and stuff. Uh, lo- lovecraft yeah, yeah. yeah i was going to mention that because that comes up in in lomas longstrider like uh some of the places he visited yeah like um, because I know George is a big history nerd. I can just tell from from even just the main series. He loves history. Uh, so it wouldn't oh, yeah. surprise me if he because Herodotus is like the is a big history thing for you to check out. It's like the the emperors. What is it? What's the thing? Tacitus, or yeah, yeah, or something like that. So I don't know. It wouldn't surprise me. And so anyway, Tac- Tacitus and Suetonius. Yeah, Tacitus and Suetonius are like the main the main guys for like the 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 fir- the Julian Claudian emperor is the first one. Because I, I he definitely has read Suetonius because um, Stannis says something. He says if I wish all of Westeros had one neck or something, um, mm, and that's yeah. what Caligula said. Calig- like Caligula is quoted as saying that, and I think in Suetonius or something. Um, so it was like, oh, so he he has his little sneaky things in there. Uh, yeah, that's a pretty interesting, by the way, just the random side. So Tacitus, so usually we have like three big historians like that, that talk about that time. There's there's Tacitus, Suetonius, and then there's another one called Dio Cassius. But Dio Cassius lived much later, but he may have had a lot of the same source material mm. before it got lost. Um, so, but 
Tacitus and Suetonius are like the main ones, and Tacitus is the more rational one, while Suetonius is is he's like the, a mushroom. Yeah, he's the yeah, the he, tabloid he, one. Right. However, Tacitus's um Tacitus's history on Caligula is lost. Oh, I did not know that. Right. So, which is why, like, which is probably why we remember Caligula as being the most outlandish of all of the emperors, because we don't have Tacitus's, like, more sober account to balance Suetonius, who is just, like, said whatever, you know? So, like, that's the whole thing. That's interesting. Dang, to imagine, like, an alternate timeline where it wasn't lost, so we have, like, a more, like, Caligula's not the crazy emperor, because he's, like, the go-to for crazy emperor. Oh, that's interesting. I did not know that. Yeah, and, and definitely people like try to, you know, definitely historians like try to figure out and reconstruct what really went on, you know, like, because like you read Suetonius and it's just like, oh, he's murdering people right and left. And like, he's trying to make his, his horse a, 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 a senator and stuff like that. And he's, and he, you know, and then, you know, I've read other stuff that's like, yeah, you know, he was executing people. But if you actually go like year for year, that's the same number of executions <laughs> that every other emperor was doing. Right. Um, you know, it it is true that there was a coup where they where they tried to uh, where they killed a Caligula, but there was also attempted coups of emperors like every other yeah, year yeah. too. Like August, <laughs> Augustus Caesar um, survived eight coups that we know about <laughs> like like you know like so it, it's really tough to say if he was really like that bad or if he was just on par right you know so yeah <laughs> lomas lomas the reason i bring him up is he's kind of like basically like westeros's herodotus like he's the guy yeah, yeah. uh that like like i think he inspired to like i so i was curious about him because everybody keeps on bringing him up and he he first shows up, I think, in dance, which was kind of surprising. Um, and it, I think it it shows up in like the Tyrian chapters because he's like a, a like a history nerd and like one is, wants to see all like the wonders of the world. Um, so I was like just curious, like because with Herodotus, like for a while, like scholars debated like where Herodotus visited, um, what time period he visited them in, and stuff. So I was curious for Lomas Longstrider, like, could I figure out, like, if I got all the information available in text for Lomas Longstrider, could I figure out, like, when he existed and then, like, where he visited? Um, so this was... Like, try to recon- reconstruct his life? Yeah, like like a story, Kyle, like, a little bit like that. Well, I, wa- I wanted to ask you, because Herodotus, because because with these travelers, certainly Herodotus and later Marco Polo, they they question whether or not... They really went to these places. Yeah. You know, like when you go as far as, um, say, five units out and you hear stories of 10 units out and you write about 10 units out and everyone then is like, oh, he traveled as far as 10 units out. Well, no, he probably traveled as far as five units out, right. but he's writing stories of that. Um, you know, Herod- Herodotus, like you don't think Herodotus actually made it to Babylon. Uh, that, see, that's a point of contention among like scholars. Like, there's people that will debate you on if you've made it to Babylon because that's the thing is like his description of Babylon is very off. Like, it has it has the weird like like girls having to have sex with one man before they reach like adulthood in a religious precinct kind of thing. And there's just no evidence of that in Babylonian sources and stuff. So it's like yeah. he he either made it up or he like it was like a, maybe a misunderstanding of like a tradition or. Or maybe because Herodotus does this a lot, like he's kind of like not racist, but like ethnocentric, I guess. So like he wants to yeah. to demonize Persians, and maybe that was like <clears throat> something like he if he did visit it there, but like he wanted to slag also, them off. Also, like some stories, some stories become so famous, and you hear them so many times, you assume they're true. Like like the the, the panties in the vending machine in Japan, <laughs> like. I lived in Japan, never saw the panties <laughs> in the vending machines in Japan. But I've heard of that. Okay. <laughs> Yo, I was actually thinking about this the other day because I remember <laughs> as a kid reading a comic and they glorify like all these things you can get in a vending machine in Japan. So I've always wondered if that was a thing. I'm so – you brought back a weird memory for me. <laughs> I mean, it, there's, no, there's no panties in vending machines? Well, I mean I never saw one and if there were, like it was probably like one vending machine. That it was, was like, like a novelty. A novel, a novelty <laughs> yeah. joke, right? You know, and so when you like take like a single novelty and then you try to portray it as 
like a monolith. The, the culture. I mean, you're from Jersey. How many women in Jersey were <laughs> dumping their babies in dumpsters after prom? <laughs> like we know that happened once, but come on. Wait, that hap- that was the thing that happened in Jersey? Yeah, that, yeah. It was like this was like me growing. It was may- maybe a little older than you, but like this was like a girl had birthed a baby at prom and then dumped it in a, a dumpster. And even that, Jesus. yeah, yeah. I, and so, so like this became like a thing to make fun of people from Jersey about. I feel like the <laughs> I never do, I never the inverse that. of that is true too because some people criticize Marco Polo because he never mentions the Great Wall of China and stuff. And it's like, how could you have gone to China but not mentioned something like that? Or, or I mean, it's kind of yeah, it's kind of true. Or Herodotus. I mean, Herodotus not... doesn't mention the Sphinx, uh, which is weird. Um, but right, you wouldn't mention the Sphinx. I mean, maybe the Sphinx was only was buried up to its neck. Yeah, I think that's probably the or explanation. Something. But yeah, like Herodotus almost definitely went to Egypt because there's details about it that like you just probably couldn't get without visiting. Um, like he's he's off. Like there's er- there's a whole bunch of mistakes and errors, but like you can see where like oh he was there, but he he made a mistake. But yeah, Marco Polo is an interesting one. Like, did Marco Polo actually reach China, or is he making it up? Yeah, but. But then again, like with George, he likes to turn everything up to 11. So like when they make it to guess, like those red priestesses really are a thing. Right. You know, like. And the, and, and the Great Pyramid is actually like 800 feet tall. It's like insanely tall, big, way too big to yeah. be like plausible. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So, you know, and just, you know, and the wall itself. So like, you know, did Lomas make it to. And, and I, I wonder about this with Corlys Velaryon too. The, like, I, wouldn't it be funny if Corlys Velaryon never made it to a shot? I, I found a, a and, contradiction about Lom, uh, about Corlys Velaryon in the. Between the World Book and the uh, Hot D, or what is it? Fire and Blood. <laughs> fire and Blood. Fire, fire and Blood. <laughs> uh, so the th- the, there's, a, there's, there's contradictions within World of Ice and Fire um, about mm. if. So it's it's explicitly stated that Lomas never saw a shy by the shadow in the world of ice and fire, and then Longstrider report. But then there's a contradiction within the same book. It says Lomas Longstrider reports that even in far a shy by the shadow, there were merchants who asked him if there was true that the Lion Lord, like about the gold of Castle Rock. So it, it, there's even a contradiction oh. there, like. That he didn't reach a shy by the shadow, but then it says that he w- did go to shy by the shadow and talk to people. I guess you could say that they were traveling merchants. I don't know. Um, and then Corley's Velarian, it's something similar where it says, uh, what does it say? I had it written down here. Even the sea snake never sailed so far as a shy by the shadow. Uh, but then you have the uh, fire and blood where it says that he was in a shy by the shadow and saw sun chaser. So it's like there's contradictions even between right. within the text. So it's hard to say. It's like. I guess he's he's leaving himself an out, or maybe George just fucked up. Maybe George just forgot, <laughs> which is entirely possible. George George forgets. He 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 makes retroactive changes. You know, where where would south of the neck and all of this kind of like retroactive changes oh, yeah. that he makes. So, um, yeah, but it, it would be funny. I think you know the, that if Lomas Longstreet had never made it to these places, and that all of these stories about a shy are wrong like you know like because some of these things like like it's always night in a shire and there's no children in the shy like come on Makes no like, sense. Like, yeah yeah it's <laughs> like how's that possible <laughs> how is that possible like you need to eat crops like how do you eat food you're going to import all of your food in ancient times the gold like, it's and the gold no that sh- they produce it pays for the food i guess <laughs> i don't it's get it so it's, no, no one would live there. No one would live there. So maybe it's all lies. Like maybe it's just all ridiculous. Like you know, with Lomas Longstreet, I was trying to figure out just when he existed, and I was able to narrow it down a little bit. Um, so George or whoever in the in the World Book, um, he he gives two kind of because Lomas Longstreet he travels throughout the world and he makes like mm. the it's basically like the Westeros equivalent of like the Seven Wonders of the world, like um. I think it's eight. I think it's nine or eight or something like that. Yeah, um, yeah. But he doesn't list them. He all doesn't list the nine wonders. And that's the confusing part because I, I tried to, I tried to put where Lomas Longstrider had visited, and I wasn't sure if the wall was if he actually went to the north because the wall is never explicitly stated as a wonder in that list. Oh, oh, really? Yeah, I think the explicit ones are the walls of Carth. Um, they think the Great Pyramid of Gis, the Norvos Bells. <laughs> The Titan of Bravos, yeah. the Palace of a Thousand Rooms in Sarnath, which is like a weird one, 
And I think that's it. I think that's all. We only get like four. I I think there might be a a um a so spake Martin where the wall was included. On, where the wall is included. Okay, that's it. I all right. Think. And I was like, um, "Is Heron Hall?" And then that's when I figured out that Heron Hall is not on there because Lomas Longstrider was b- dead before Heron Hall was built. Because did, did you put down the Long Bridge at Volantis? Because oh yeah, Long Bridge of Volantis. Yeah, that's another one. Right, right. And then there's ones you kind of like feel like would be. So I think like, like the High Tower. Right, the High Tower because because some of because some of these wonders clear have clear parallels to our seven wonders. Yeah. Right. So like the High Tower is a clear parallel to the Lighthouse at Alexandria. Yeah. So and the Lighthouse at Alexandria was a wonder of the world, so you'd think the High Tower would be. Or the Great Pyramid of Giza is a wonder of the world, so one would think that the Great Pyramid of Gis right. at, at Marine would be one. Or the Titan um, of Bravos the, is like the Colossus. Is the Colossus of Rhodes, yeah. right? Yeah. Oh. Um I'm trying to think of any of the others really like I, I mean, I, I maybe that Sarnak thing with the thousand rooms sounds like the Hanging Gardens of Babylon, but I thought um, the Water Gardens were like the Hanging ba- uh, like Gardens of Babylon in like Dorne, because no, I think it, yeah, I think I mean, he makes yeah. it to please his like queen, which is like a, something that the is the story with like the Hanging Gardens. But he could reuse it. George reuses stuff. The, the see the thing is the Palace of the Thousand Rooms is where I found like the the definitive death date for Lomas Longstrider. Because in the world book, it said that it's burned in the Century of Blood by Dothraki. Um, so it's like, okay, Lomas Longstrider was dead, was, was had to have visited it before 10, uh, like 102 BC or whatever. Okay. So that's like an end date. Like Lomas Longstrider like, couldn't have visited, couldn't have been alive after this date or whatever. Couldn't have visited that spot after this date because it was gone. Um, and then my high, like the other end is is. I think 500 BC is what he decided on because he mentioned seeing the Titan of Bravos. Um, right. And that, that has to be created by the Valyrian slaves, right? Yeah. Who, who, who have, who have like left to found, and, to found Bravos. And cause I'm right? a big nerd and it's like a stickler. I actually found a contradiction on the founding of Bravos, which <laughs> cause I'm a jerk. Cause, uh, <laughs> so Arya, let's see, I, I wrote it down. So Arya and Cat, the Cat of the Canals, says that Bravos' is, is, is existence was secret for 100 years, and the location was uh, revealed 300 years after that. Um, but then the world book says its existence and location were revealed at the same time, uh, 111 years mm. after its founding. So, Well, I always, you know, I always say, like, like the out, main like, series, I think the main takes series precedent. always trumps the world, yeah. the world of Ice and Fire. Because, like, the world, yeah, I mean, there's so many things, like, I... I mean, having been through having been through these books a million times, like, <laughs> like Fire and Blood is riddled with errors and was slapped together. Yeah, the World of Ice and Fire is even and, worse. Like, has a, yeah, <laughs> um, like I find an error, like I find errors like all the time. Yeah, where I'm just like, oh god, Th- like that's why I was curious that's, about that's Lomas Longshutter if it would even make sense. Um, because he's also like, you know that mushroom, mushroom, mushroom is in two places at once. Oh, really? In in, in fire and Wait, blood. Wait, really? Because yeah. we're, we're going. Yeah. we're we're going. Yeah. By the way, for the audience who thinks we forgot, like me, Preston, and Trey have been discussing for what well, feels like years at this point to continue the <laughs> fire and blood. We have to. I we have so have to. Pre- what do you mean? He's in in two places. So it's very clear that originally Mushroom was just the source in King's Landing on what was going on. But then when when he wrote when George R. R. Martin wrote Fire and Blood, he wanted to have Mushroom next to Rhaenyra pr- as a parallel to like Tyrion being next to oh. to Daenerys would be my guess. Where he like starts claiming that he was an advisor. Like Mushroom's role is expanded in Fire and Blood. Um, however. He forgot to remove the, the passages of Mushroom still being in King's Landing. Damn it, George. And so, like, yeah. So he, He's like, specifically says, yeah, he specifically says that, like, Mushroom traveled with Rhaenyra to serve her when she, like, moved to Dragonstone. But at the same time, he starts talking about Viserys, like, on his deathbed. And the only people that would make him happy was, like, Mushroom. Oh. And you're like, oh. Oh, that's true. Yeah, it doesn't <laughs> like, work. it's... <laughs> like and, it, and it's clearly from his, his his like you know retroactively going back and changing things but then forgetting to remove like certain <laughs> passages <laughs> oh uh, yeah so yeah that's why I, I was just i was just curious with lomas like because there's another thing where it says that he 
interviewed descendants of the Roinar in Kroyane. Um, so it would, ha- it would have oh. to be after the second Spice War, which was like the destruction of Kroyane. So it was like, okay, that narrows it down a little bit. And when he says centuries later, I'd be like, okay, at least at least a hundred, like at least two hundred years. That's how I ended up with five hundred BC. So he, that, so he must have existed, or unless George screwed up, he must have existed between five hundred and a hundred and two BC. So he, he's a relatively recent figure in like the world, the a Song of Ice and Fire world. Right, but de- but he's definitely like before. He's definitely you're saying he's definitely before conquest. Yeah, I think he's before conquest because he couldn't have visited the th- Palace of a Thousand Rooms because it was burned after the fall of Valyria by the Dothraki. Like the Dothraki conquered that region and burned mm. burned the palace, so he had to have visited it before the palace was burned. Um, and I think that might be an explanation why, uh, like the Heron Hall's not on the list of like the wonders because yeah, it wasn't just built not, yet, not, cons- not not constructed yet. Yeah. So that was like yeah. my thought experience. So that was just a little fun thought experiment. I don't know because because George likes like these traveler characters, like in the Thousand Worlds. Like he had a whole bunch of little traveler characters that. Uh yeah, t- uh, Thomas Tomo and, and Wahlberg. Wahlberg. Yeah. Tomor and Wahlberg. Yeah. <laughs> the nerd, yeah. the Thousand Worlds nerd in me comes out. <laughs> Claire Namas and, <laughs> and uh, yeah, oh no, gosh. I love, I love, yeah, I love Tomo and Wahlberg and how they just keep they keep uh, getting mentioned. And uh, <laughs> I mean, Claire, I guess Claronimus was also a big traveler, but he actually appears eventually as the character. Yeah. By um, the way, I know a lot of people are going to ask because I don't know if you know this, Trey. Preston and I have a lot of fans who have never read the books, so they don't know. When Trey says B.C., he doesn't mean B.C. the way we know it. Uh, it time and dates in Game of Thrones is usually measured by, like, specifically after Danny's ancestor, the first Targaryen king, conquered Westeros. Mm. So the Game of Thrones takes place, what is it, Preston, in 298? AC? Yeah. After the conquest? And uh, so when Trey says B.C., he's talking before about before conquest. the conquest. Yeah, yeah. Right. And George, George is yeah, weird yeah. about that. Did you, did you see in Fire and Blood where he like was really like a stickler on like the date of like the the transition from AC to B, BC to AD or whatever it is? Right. He's like he's like actually the conquest happened before, and that the actual like date was like we take the conquest as his coronation date, but he's actually going around like conquering before yeah. that, and he's visiting before that. I think that might be just a reference to the fact that like people think that Jesus was born in in 4 bc okay oh, okay yeah yeah you know right you know yeah based on like herod herod the great's like um death or something which you know that that, he, that, that the census the straw. census of corniness or, or whatever yeah that too yeah just yeah ridi- ridiculous, ridiculous <laughs> <stuff>. <laughs> it, i don't know it's interesting it, it, like a song of ice and fire is like an interesting like relationship with history like with um I don't know, like dates, like a lot of dates are just kind of doesn't like the fact that Westeros' history is so long, like absurdly long, but we don't really know much of what happened between like time periods. Yeah, like we, we're never given an explanation on why, um, like when Maester Lewin gives his like background on went on, on the histories um, in, in a Game of Thrones and he starts talking about like, you know, the, the wall 8,000 years ago and the and the, the Age of Heroes 12,000 years ago and stuff like that. There's no explanation on how you got those numbers. Like, how'd you get those numbers of thousands if, and because because later Sam like blows it all up and is yeah. like, well, nothing was written down before the Andal invasion. So, you know, we only have <laughs> lists of Lord Commanders that go back to like 600 uh, Lord Commanders or whatever, or 600 lord commanders back not a thousand and stuff like that so what 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 are they basing it on you know mm. like it's, it's oral history but how, how are you getting that you know and like the oral history once, doesn't once make you... sense like there's knights before like this the uh andals like arrived and, and stuff like that there's like weird stuff um that is very real history like real history is messy like that where you'll have like anachronisms like the bible yeah. has a whole bunch of anachronisms in it like um one that is pointed out, like archaeologists have pointed out, is that um, Abraham rides camels or something um, at oh, a time right. when, when camels weren't domesticated yet. So it shows that it was written after after the fact, or at least the story was changed or something like that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's amazing, like, once you break down almost any field and you get down to the real basics of it, um, 
that a field kind of falls apart mm. when you get to like the fundamental assumptions. Like with physics, like the, the people will start talking about like, oh, well, the universe is like 13, 13.8 billion years old or whatever. And we know this until that this big bang within the, the, the first second to the, the, the fraction of a second, we know that these particles and these forces came into being and blah, 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 blah. And then you kind of ask a, a very simple question like, well, how, 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 if, how can you measure time if, there, if there's no distance? Mm. And there's no answer to that because you can't measure time without distance. So if the universe, if everything was in an inf- infinitesimally small like, like point, how, how can there be time? Because time is reliant on distance to measure from like one point to another. Like, even if you say like, what's the speed of light? Like, well, you know, you need, you need two points. You Mm -hmm. need like, you need a distance to to measure speed. And because time is, 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 is a product and derivative of speed. Um, And, and, and you kind of realize that like, oh man, like all the physics kind of break, kind of breaks down (laughs) at that point. I studied economics. And when you kind of say like, well, what's the value of something? And you say, well, how do you determine the value of something? Well, you're like, well, you know, the, the, the market determines the value. So like, okay. So, um, so you're saying the price is the value. So the price is always the value. So what if I get something on sale? Like, is that no longer the value yeah like and how you know (laughs) it's so like well it's your willingness to pay but why would i why would a person be willing to pay more than the market price and so like a really basic question like (laughs) what what is what is the value of something in economics is like once you actually analyze it it breaks down like what what like what is time all physics breaks down history it's like how do we know something happened well you know we don't some, somebody you have to rely somebody on wrote it yeah <laughs> and that person's somebody biased or making stuff up yeah that, that is yeah. like the history question right like how there's really no way of knowing for sure if it actually happened it could all just be made yeah. up yeah we're, we're we're just in this world like it's, it's amazing how blind like our entire world is and yet, yet we're so confident like every day when we go forward how like it you know in a practical sense we're so we're so we just we just know we you know (laughs) we live out our days but we we really know nothing (laughs) (laughs) Uh, i think that's about it yeah no it's it's just getting the time and then i i got like his places that he visited like the wall he went to gis he went to karth he went to the roin he went to norvos and what kinds of he went to tall tall trees town and stuff like that yeah i just was like writing like where he had been um, like going he, all the way to Karth does seem out of the way with the rest of them, right? Yeah. Like the Valyrian roads, uh, that that's easy. That's on the East Coast. The wall up in Westeros. I don't, we don't know if he went to the wall, but um, the Titan of Bravos, okay. And then the Norvos, Volantis, Sarnath, which means he probably went to like, Slaver's Bay and saw that pyramid. But, but Karth... That's a that's a, that's a fair bit more distance, you know. And it says he also went to E T or E T in in Ling, which is pretty far. That's like you're you're almost pretty much at a shy by the shadow at that point. So yeah, like, um, it says yeah, it says here what the, he he saw um, that maybe maybe he went to to E T in Lung, Lung and and like there was there's a massive fortress maybe there, um. But he definitely went to Crogain. Crogain makes makes sense yeah. if he's in Norvos and he's going down to Volantis. V- visiting the Summer Isles, I suppose, would make sense just as a stopping off point for traveling back to Westeros or something. Mm. But but these um yeah, let's let, let we'll just we're we're gonna we'll make this like headcanon that he never actually went to Karth. He's just <laughs> making that shit up. I would not list the walls of Karth on like the, the wonders of the world. <laughs> they seem just kind of lame. Um, well, right, or the oh, how how good are the three bells? <laughs> he he uh, the fact that I guess they ring regularly. Um, then again, he included like the roads of Valyria. I guess the roads of Valyria are kind of impressive that like they haven't been broken or destroyed in three hundred years or however long it's been. Well, I mean, if we look at the the regular the regular wonders of, of um, at least according to the stories, I would say the pyramids are obviously really impressive. And so is like the Temple of Zeus, mm. 
the descriptions I've heard. Uh, the descriptions of the of the Hanging Gardens of Babylon seem seem pretty great. Great, but um, but the Colossus. How impre- Colossus was only like standing for like thirty years or something like that. It was it, like you could only enjoy it for a very short amount of time, and then it collapsed. Uh, and then, like, how big was it? Was it really an actually a really huge st- statue? I had a friend. Or, I had like, a how... friend. I commissioned a friend to do an illustration on like a, a pretty scientifically accurate reconstruction of what it may have looked like, and it was like it's like the size of the, of the Eiffel, not the Eiffel Tower, of uh, what's the Statue of Liberty without the podium? So it's like relatively big for the ancient world, I guess. I suppose, but the Statue of Liberty is not that big. <laughs> but, uh, or the the lighthouse, right? The lighthouse is that that big? Uh, you know? I don't know if the lighthouse was super uh, original. Like I think what, what's original about the lighthouse of Alexandria? I think it was maybe the first lighthouse. Let's see. I don't wanna. I don't wanna to make myself incorrect. I think it is it the first because there were a whole bunch of Roman lighthouses. Like there's a there's a Roman lighthouse that you can visit in. Um, I think Spain, the Tower of Her- of Her- Hercules, um, and it's it's like the mm-hmm. one of the most intact Roman buildings still around. Um, so there were like several lighthouses in the ancient world. So yeah, maybe the yeah. lighthouse Alexandria is not actually that interesting. So so if I'm if I'm going with like, but that's the thing he's, he's scraping the bottom of the barrel. <laughs> like Herodotus, Herodotus is like scraping the bottom of the barrel and he's just like picking the best things like at this point mm. like the, the ancient world doesn't have that much the ancient world is is, is, is a lot of rocks and dirt oh yeah and and <laughs> so he's got the pyramids and you know frankly the other pyramids are probably pretty impressive too but he's like i already did like, oh, crap pyramid. i already I'm got those do, i'm not gonna <laughs> yeah i'm not gonna do another pyramid um and, and, and for, probably a lot of temples in Egypt would be better than than, than some of these <laughs> some of the stuff. Yeah, but I'm gonna say that the the Colossus of Rhodes, I think the mausoleum at um, Halicarnassus was probably not that great. Oh, that was just, I White feel House. like that was him just putting his own city on the map because he's from Halic- yeah. Halicarnassus. So yeah, maybe it was him. Like he's like, oh, I got. Like, I want to say that the I want to say that the really good ones are Temple of Artemis. Hmm. At Ephesus, Statue of Zeus at Olympia, the Pyramids of Giza, and the Hanging Gardens of Babylon. And then the rest is just kind of like... It's filler. Filler. <laughs> yeah, it's filler. So the, 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 the thing with the, the Nine Wonders of Westeros, though, is that there are... Um, Westeros is insane. Right. Westeros has so many wonders that you're like, how did you limit it at, at nine? Yeah. Right, like the eerie, like, like the eerie is just a, this crazy thing that shouldn't exist. Right, or Stor- Storm's End. Oh yeah, um, you know, Storm's End by itself is like so incredible. Or and and so like there's the five forts exist, the the fortress at, at, at Lung, the high tower at Old Town, um, you know, there, we we have the Great Pyramid of Gis. There's there's more than. Then, uh, so, so when, when I look at like the three bells of Norvos, I'm like, oh man, <laughs> like, what are you, what are you doing? Or the triple walls of Karth, which are not that impressive. Um, I guess the, if the long bridge of Volantis is really fucking long, um, you know, but you know, it, it's, uh, and the Titan of Bravos is really fucking impressive. I, I'm, I'll grant that. And the wall is insane. The Titan of the Bravos is, is absolutely cool. insane. Titan of Bravos, I yeah. feel like is George, was George trying to make a, a, like a realistic version of like the sort of pop cultural idea of the Colossus of Rhodes with its yeah. like legs spread? Like I really thought, I really thought, and I've seen artwork of it. Yeah. Like, like the, the, the Colossus, like spanning the canal with his legs and, and people sailing underneath it. And you're like, come on. Like now, now that I'm older, I'm like, man, that's, that's ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> like no one, no one, no one would have done but that. But George like saying it's like made of an, a natural arch, like a stone arch. Like that's actually pretty clever. I'm actually impressed that, that it's like, they yeah, use yeah. like a natural structure because that would be more, that would be more sturdy than like a man-made it's one. Definitely. Like, oh, that's cool. All right. All right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That that would be yeah, cuz there's no way human beings could could put that up. But then yeah, then he just starts filling them in. Yeah. Um so he should have more he should have more than 9. He should have thrown the bells 
and and the freaking uh, and the and the walls of Karth off the list. And that's why I'm going to say that the, he never went to Karth because had he seen those walls, <laughs> he, like, he wouldn't have thought they shit. were impressive. <laughs> he would have, and that. And that he never really made it to the five forts, which is why he like didn't include it as a, you know. And that the rest of the list is maybe like the high tower of Old Town and the and the and the pyramid of of Gis. Um, but yeah, I'm, 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 yeah he never, he never the twins would he have would he have included the twins? Are the, are the um, twins impressive actually? Twins. Oh, that's a good question. Like how long? Like how wide is the the trident at that point? Let's see. Do we know? I mean, there's a lot of really like impressive stuff that, like Winterfell and their geothermal piping and everything, oh, yeah. is pretty freaking impressive. And their light and their and their their greenhouses and geothermally fed greenhouses. But I don't know if somebody like just looking at Winterfell would be like, "Oh, that's impressive." That's true, you know. It's um or Casterly Rock because there's like know. a there's like an aqueduct in uh, in Samos. It's like one of the oldest aqueducts, and it's really impressive because it's carved out of like solid stone for miles, like straight. Um, and Herodotus mentions it as a as a wonder, um, but like visually, it's not that interesting. But like the amount of like work that put into it, I guess, is is very interesting. Yeah. Mm. Like that's the thing is, <clears throat> what is what is actually like difficult to produce and and. And what looks impressive might not might not be a uh, one to one, you know. The bridge is wide enough for two wagons to cross abreast. Uh. <laughs> the I think like the the walls of Atlantis, it's like four chariots abreast or something like that. So that's not super impressive for Song of Ice and Fire. Uh. Yeah, I mean I, I, those walls of Atlantis, though. Still, I would still be pretty impressed by it. You know, four chariots. Uh, I mean, it depends how big the city is. Uh, uh. Yeah. Oh, uh, well. So that's my Lomas, my Lomas tangent. I don't know. It's something, something that kept me busy. Because I don't think anybody's really looked into Lomas. I was like, what's, who's this Lomas character? I think, I think this is, I think this is pretty, pretty fun. Pretty fun. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. I mean, if you, if you did Ice and Fire videos, maybe, uh, maybe that would be a good one. I, I, I did one for Septon Barth a while ago. Like what, mm. all the information we have on Septon Barth, like what do, what do we know? Um, we know very little, We know, just like a little bit here and there. And, uh, yeah, well, the thing is, is that like Septon Barth seems like he knows all the answers of the a Song of Ice and Fire universe. Um, but nobody listens to him, like in the world book, he's brought up a lot. Like he he yeah. in the world book, it's like he proposes he, the idea that that uh, like Westeros used to have regular seasons according to like the sun, um, and everybody's like, "That's stupid! What a stupid idea! That's dumb!" So he's, <laughs> he's good stuff like that, like, yeah, yeah. And he fi- he's clearly figured out how to like how to like birth and kill dragons, and like wrote a book on it, and like it, it got lost, it got destroyed, you know, so. Do you think Septon Barth is like going to be relevant? Because because didn't didn't isn't isn't it like one of your theories that Ariane read Septon Barth? Yes, I I believe that that the book in in the Tower with with Arian is is Septon Barth's unnatural history. Oh. Do you, ooh, yeah, I'm, I'm convinced. Maybe that. that's going to come up later when she meets uh, Aegon, and like she's going to help him get a dragon or something like that. She definitely left that book behind. I mean, I think Doran just has. Did she remember it? Maybe she remembers it because she read it, right? No, she got she got she no she got super bored. She tried oh, to, shoot. and then she said it was like <laughs> it made dragons as boring as newts. And I was like, um, yeah, and that and that was it. And you're like, oh, and she couldn't have given um, that to Quentin. Quentin, that would have been really helpful, right? That would be very helpful. For <laughs> but, nah, but <laughs> damn, yeah, I, I, either either a very cool little. Um, little nod in a, in a big Dornish master plan, or George just being an idiot. So, <laughs> like world building. Let's see. He said, "What do we know about Septon Barth?" He says that death comes out of a dragon's mouth. Yeah, he knows everything about dragons. I guess is his deal. Yeah, uh, yeah. Which is I my my assumption that his, why his books were were um were banned. He knew that they were of course n- it's neither fun- male or female. It, it's funny when you say like like every copy of of it was was destroyed and you're like oh really all four <laughs> <You> know, <like. laughs> that's a good joke when like uh joffrey's wedding when he chops up that book it's great like it's like oh damn that probably took so much time and 
Yeah. Oh, my God. Because <laughs> yeah, George loves books. That's another thing I find out about George. He loves books. So he probably, he probably yeah, relates absolutely. to that. Barth believed yeah, I mean, that fresh water and the flushing away of awful and waste was important to a city's health. So Septon Barth knew germ theory of disease, I guess, too. Septon Barth knew everything. Nobody listened to him. I know. If only, if only Barristan would have listened. You know? <laughs> could have, you could have saved Marine. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Are, are what's do you, this? Is this a? Are you going to do uh, the the Barristan uh, stuff for the Winds of Winter soon? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Oh, though, nice. though, the question is, you know, how how soon until Barristan dies, and is Barristan going to die in his own point of view, or is someone else going to see him die? Oh, nice. Like it could be that like George's two Barristan chapters are are, are all that one needs of Barristan um, because we have so many points of view at the battle of fire. Already. Yeah. So, but, and, and there's already, you know, so it, we'll see, we'll see how it goes. Um, but yeah. He, um, and you know, is, is it important that Barristan dies? Is he, is he worth care, you know, keeping around? I think it's pretty clear that George intended for him to die um, at the battle of fire, but who knows, who knows what'll, what'll happen. You have to give him a glorious death. You have or, to. Or, or I want to give him a lame oh, death. <laughs> give, no, I want to give him like a pathetic. Like he gets death. hit with a like, really? he gets hit with a trebuchet like bolt or, or or rock or something. I don't know something like that. So 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 there is something there is something with with like Barristan having a pathetic death, and that is his 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 chapters are named after like are are all all kind of hint to Kristen Cole. Um, you know, his chapters are like the King Breaker instead of the King Maker and the, and the you know, the, the, the Queen's Hand because Kristen Cole is a King's Hand and all of this kind of mm-hmm. stuff. So you can say that there's a lot of like references to Kristen Cole and Kristen Cole had a pathetic death. Mm. <laughs> so like where like nobody cared. He died and was forgotten. Or like a pit fighter and, kills him maybe, like one of his own guys. Yeah, and yeah. It's, pr- it's probably, and the pit fighters don't like Gogor him. Gogor the giant all, or something, some, some yeah, no name. they're just like, he's just, <laughs> he's just not looking and he doesn't even see it. And, and like this pit fighter just like chops off his head and that's like the end. Oh, damn. And that's the end of the, to the great Barristan Selmy. Oh. You know, 